Let me show you this tweet from George Galloway. He says, those who will never recover their reputations after this is a long list, including governments, politicians, institutions, journalists, newspapers, broadcasters, civil society organizations, etc. But up near the top of the list is the so-called leader of the opposition Labour Party in the land of Balfour, Sir Keir Starmer. Keir Starmer is as charismatic as a bookshelf. I want to show you this video where he was speaking a few days ago. So he's the leader of the opposition, right? I mean, you have to understand in England, there, there is no opposition. It's like in America, you've got Democrats, Republic. You, you've got Democrats and Republicans who are in one party. Just like in America, where you have Democrats and Republicans who are the same crap. Every act. It's the same thing in England. And I want you to see, I want you to see it like the hypocrisy here, really hypocrisy at its finest. As to whether each and every act is in accordance with the law, well, that will have to be adjudicated in due course. Um, I think it's unwise for politicians to stand on stages like this or to sit in television studios and pronounce day by day which acts may or may not be in accordance with international law. I think it's not the role of politicians. Is Vladimir Putin a war criminal? Yes. yes. What I've seen already amounts to war crimes, uh, particularly uh, the awful attacks on civilians. As to whether each and Wow. I mean, what a transition, right? He went right from, uh, it's not my position to, yes, he's a war criminal. Uh, so he's a lawyer when he wants to be. A monkey closing his mouth when he, when he uh, doesn't want to be. This was about Gaza, right? Where he's saying, oh, it's not my place to say whether it's a war crime. Jesus Christ. How many, how many people have to die before you get it? What a spineless chicken. What a spineless coward. He's, he's really, I mean, pathetic. The guy, like I said, he's about as charismatic as a bookshelf. He said once, quote, I'm a Zionist without qualification. You can't reason with any of them because the, the, the Tories are Zionists and so are the Labour. You know, it's the same crap. So he's asked about a ceasefire, yeah? Whether there should be a ceasefire. Wow, very, very controversial position. Two-state solution. And Israel, where every citizen enjoys the security they need and a viable Palestinian state. What the fuck? Why do they always change the words, you know? First he's saying Israel and, uh, you know, security, and they always say these things, then a viable Palestinian state. No, no, why don't you use the same words? Also, two-state solution is dead, and, you, you know, even Netanyahu doesn't bother pretending with that crap. Actually, especially Netanyahu doesn't bother pretending. Why should, why should anybody else? I, you know, this is like somebody breaks into your house, they take half of your rooms, and then they, they, they say, like, you know, if you don't accept partitioning the house, then you're a terrorist. Do you think America would accept that? You think someone, you, people can just go to America and make a new country out of some state? They'd be nuked. They'd be nuked, caged, deported. <laughs> you have another thing coming. Palestinian people and their children enjoy the freedoms and opportunities that we all take for granted. And that is why, while I understand calls for a ceasefire at this stage, I do not believe that it is the correct position now for two reasons. One, because a ceasefire always freezes any conflict in the state where it currently lies. And as we speak, that would leave Hamas with the infrastructure and the capability to carry out the sort of attack we saw on October the 7th. Attacks that are still ongoing hostages who should be released still held yeah they, they can be released when you release uh you know the ten thousand palestinians that are in israeli jails how about that and the two million people that are held hostage in gaza they, you, do you see how extreme they've become they before they would they don't want to ceasefire of course but they would say it to you know pay lip service and uh you, do, you don't want to ceasefire that's actually very good because uh the resistance we're gonna make sure that, uh, you know, things never go back to the way they were. No, no, they cannot. How can they go back to the way they were? You've massacred. You've committed a genocide. This asswipe, I mean, just look at him. What a pathetic mop. He looks like a mop. Like a bloody broom handle. And he, he puts a poppy on it, you know, he, he pins a poppy on his, on his blazer, like as if he gives a shit about veterans or people that died from wars. And he's advocating for genocide while wearing a poppy. You clown. You want to see how people are... <laughs> Are reacting outside. Well, I can tell you they're not. They're not very happy.
I don't understand what ceasefire now is going to accomplish because it's just, you know, basically the Israelis are going to do it again. They're going to keep massacring people and they've done it in so many countries. They've, I mean, every single neighbor they've invaded, attacked, you know, killed all of them infiltrated with spies. Uh, what is a ceasefire going to achieve? What, you know, it's like you have a squatter, a thief in the house and you're saying like, yeah, let's just leave him there for a while longer. No, fuck back to where you belong go home you have like multiple citizenships and, and you're caging palestinians what who said palestinians owe you anything For, uh, whether it's diplomacy whether it's a ceasefire look what look what that got them it's been 75 years it's been 30 years since oslo accords what did diplomacy get the palestinians the A arab league signed on to the arab peace initiative in the early 2000s do you want to know a fun fact hamas wrote to george bush in 2006 and said that they would you know they would be okay with the ceasefire uh you know and they were they were talking about uh um you know basically finding peaceful alternatives uh they said that if uh, the borders were returned to 1967 that they would recognize israel george bush the white house never replied so who is the one that doesn't want diplomacy? I mean, e even, even that is already too generous for the Israelis. On principle, it's too generous because you have someone who has imposed themselves upon you, who has stolen your resources, stolen your land, and committed genocide against you. You don't owe that person anything. On the contrary, they owe you reparations. I just, I just want to show you how, how the narrative has, has shifted. This is not a normal war, or shall we say it's not like previous wars. This is very, very serious, and it's very, very big. And th this is why the reason they don't want to cease fire is because they want Israel to push the Palestinians into the desert to take Gaza, make it into a canal and take Gaza's gas, Syria's gas, Lebanon's gas and make a rival to the New Silk Road. Why this genocide in Gaza is happening? It's, it's not just because Israel is racist. We know they're racist. It's, be it's ethnic cleansing plus giant economic incentives that benefit the EU and the US as well, not just Israel.